In this video, I'm going to explain how to self-publish a paperback on Amazon. We'll be using the Kindle Direct Publishing, or KDP, web-based interface. This is all free, and I'm going to explain how to do it by actually publishing a book. Before we get into the pu publishing process, I want to talk about the self-publishing requirements. You're going to need three things before we proceed. First, you'll need a copy-edited book manuscript. That's right, it should be copy-edited. Make sure that it doesn't have spelling, grammar, style, and usage errors. Make sure that everything is clean and it makes sense, and make sure that you formatted it with running headers and footers ready and page numbers ready to be published in paperback format. KDP accepts the manuscript in four formats. One is EPUB, which is their new ebook format, HTML, PDF, and DOCX, or Word format. Since I wrote the book in Word, it's very convenient that the Word document storage format is accepted by KDP. I'm going to show you using a DOCX file in this uh, video, but it will work the same for whatever format that you happen to have. You'll need a book cover, and here you'll need it in JPEG format. Make sure that you have something ca that catches the eye and gets people to maybe start investigating buying your book. And then the final thing you'll need is a book description. Now, this is just cut and paste text, so you can write it in whatever editor you want. I'm going to write it in Word, and what's interesting is that the bold and italics and stuff come over in a cop copy and paste over to KDP when you publish. Now, make sure that you copyright your description. Make it really good. And with that said, we're going to head over to KDP and publish a book. Now, I'm going to do everything except hit the Publish button because I'm going to use the source for a book that's already published. KDP is located at kdp.com. Let's jump over there. Okay, KDP is a web-based interface, so all you need is a browser, and I'm going to show you running Chrome in Windows 11. I have a new tab here, and in it, I'm going to go to kdp.com. Now, to get a KDP account, you may need to register the first time that you come here. I think you probably do. And all you need is an Amazon account. If you don't have an Amazon account, you have need to register for one of those before you can register for KDP. Anyway, go through all the registration if you need to. And then the first screen that you come to is going to be called the bookshelf. This shows you all of your books, and you can go back and edit them and so on and modify things. If you, if you wanted to change anything, you can change the book covers and so on. Now, it turns out that because paperbacks get ISBN numbers, you can't go and just modify a paperback. They're kind of chiseled in granite once you publish them. So what you have to do is unpublish and republish the paperback. But you can go and you can modify uh, Kindle eBooks and so on. Now, to create a paperback, you go over and you click on the big Create button here. And you're presented with a new screen that shows you all the things that you can create. Now, this is usually the order in which I create things. So I usually create the Kindle ebook first. And as a result, the fill in the blank screens that you're about to see for a paperback are quite often mostly filled out with the ebook stuff. So it makes publishing a paperback after publishing a Kindle ebook very easy. Now we're going to go direct to paperback. I'm going to show you how to publish a paperback without an ebook existing for it. So this is the tab that we're going to use. After that, I usually do a hardcover and I do large print. So I select everything in my Word document and I change the point size of the text to at least 16 point, and that's large print. So I do a large print a book cover and I usually do the series page as I'm publishing the book. And this is a new feature that's really neat. You should look into it. Look into my what is Kindle Villa, Vela, a YouTube video that will show you how to publish a story serially. As few as 600 words, if you write that, you can be a published 
Amazon author, look in Devella. But we're going to create a paperback. So let's click on the Create a Paperback button. And here you're thrown into the first of three screens that ask you for information to produce your book. The first is the paperback details. Next is the paperback content, which is the uh, manuscript, your book cover, and stuff like that. And then your uh, rights and pricing is the last tab. On this, the details screen, you put in your title. Now I'm going to publish a book called Moving Violation. So put your book title here. And whatever it is, whatever length. Now I think for all the title stuff, you're limited to 240 characters, so you got a lot of room. And the next thing that I do is I usually put a subtitle on so that I can stuff keywords for searchable things. A small town mis cozy mystery. Here, that gets a bunch of keywords in there and will show up in the title. Now, a series, you usually want to have books in a series. The reason is, is that it's easy to sell the next book in a series, or it's easier than it is to sell a standalone. Now, I'm going to skip the series here just for brevity, but when you click on the series page or add a series, it brings you into, is this a new series and you can create one, or I can go select an existing series, and so on. If you're, this is your first book, then you don't need to put it in a series. You can see this is optional. The edition number is optional. I usually skip it or put one because people like to get first editions. Here's the name of the author. This book is written by my wife, Melanie Jackson. Now, it also has the option to supply additional contributors. I don't like to use this and recommend you don't. Don't put your editor and the person who put your book cover and all that stuff. It makes it look like the book was written by committee. And it just adds a bunch of junk that the reader doesn't need to know about. I mean, sure, it's great to honor the people. Honor them in a dedication page or something in your book, not on Amazon. And then finally, here's our description. This is where you put your book description. Now, this needs to be copyrighted, meaning as in writing copy, writing sales copy. It's not just a synopsis of your book. It's actually a sales pitch for your book. Now, I wrote this up beforehand in Word, and you want a lot of white space and breaks and so on to to make it look interesting, here the bold and italics is going to come over when I copy. So I just select the whole thing in Word, right click, say copy, come over here, go into the box, and I right click and I say paste. And here is my book description. So spend time writing a good salesy book description. If you want, go look at Moving Violation on Amazon and you can get an idea of how this book description is written. Now, do you own the publishing rights or is this in the public domain? I own them. Primary audience, this is not a sexually explicit, so I'll say no. The marketplace, you can pick the marketplace that you want to publish in. I'm going to publish in the United States, which is amazon.com. And here are your categories. Now, these are required, and these are the book categories that you come into. So to get found, you need to uh, make sure that you're in the right category. But try and pick a, a category in which you can dominate. So this is a mystery, and it is a cozy mystery. And let's say it's general and... Ah, well, crafts and uh, it's not crafts and hobbies, though. Anyway, you want to put in three categories and put them all in here. I'm just going to put one to show you how it's done. This is not a low content book. If you're write, uh, putting a journal or something like that, it's not large print. When you do your hardback, click the hard the large print. Here are your search keywords. This is more SEO to find your book. They're optional, and I'm not going to go into them. Because Amazon SEO is a whole topic that could take hours. 
Uh, the default is uh, the publication date and today is the, or whenever you publish is the same. Release the book now. I'm not going to schedule it for a future release. You can pre-release books. And that is page one. We have filled it out with the minimum requirements. Now, usually I do a series and I do keywords, but we're going to skip that for now for brevity. We save and continue, and that moves us to the second page. Now, in the first page, we kind of defined all the stuff that's going to show on to, up on Amazon to describe your book. Here, we're going to actually create the contents of your book. Now, I want to assign an ISBN. This is great. Free ISBNs assigned by Amazon. Every paperback has to have an ISBN, even though I think they're outdated and not used, really. And... The ISBN will automatically be in the barcode that Amazon adds to the back of your book. Here's print options. I like to use the defaults because they're all uh, the cheapest options to print my book. If you start going to cream paper or stuff like that, premium color interior with white paper is the most expensive, your book just gets pricey. And print-on-demand books are already pricey. Now, the cheapest size for your book is six by nine inches. If you have a different size, then you can go here and you can see various standard sizes or type in the actual dimensions of your book. Now, your manuscript source, your docx file, has to be formatted for the same dimensions as your book cover, your .jpeg file, as you set here in KDP, they all have to match. So I have already formatted my docx file to be a page size of six by nine. I created my JPEG file to be a size of six by nine, and now I'm going to publish with a trim size of six by nine. Whatever you choose as your size, now six by nine, it's a little clunky. It's trade paperback size, so it's bigger than a standard paperback. But it's the cheapest print size, so I like to print in that. Okay, the next thing you do is you upload your manuscript. So I'm going to go to my manuscript, which this is under Melanie's writing, moving violation, docx. I double-click on it, and it uploads it. It also starts trying to process it and prepares it. It's converting it from docx into EPUB, which is the new format. It used to be Mobi format that Kindles use, but now they're moving to EPUB, which is the industry standard. So that's happening in the background. Now what you do is you go to creating a book cover. Now, creating a book cover is kind of interesting. I'm going to launch the cover creator. What you don't want to do, though, is use cover creator covers. These standard covers, they look terrible and they're recognizable as newbie stuff. So we're gonna just continue here and I'm gonna skip this step. You can see here are the covers that you can choose from. Choose this design. They're all really ugly. What you want is the one in the upper left-hand corner. What we're gonna use is the cover creator to create the spine and the back of the book, and we're going to supply the front cover. So let's choose this blank design. Okay, we're going to dismiss the tutorial. And here it's already labeled the spine for us. It's really nice not having to create the spine, but look at all this other stuff that needs to be created. Let's go click on the cover, and it says, where would you like to get it from? I'm going to get it from my computer, where I have in pictures, covers Melanie, new Chloe covers, and here's the cover for moving violation. So I bring that in, and it usually goes outside. See this little, there's a little red, okay, let's click on this. It's complaining about the fact that it's outside the cut range. Now, when you create these book covers, make sure that you're a half an inch away from the edge of the cover, anything that you don't want cut. And then resize the things that you're in this side, this red dashed line. Okay? Now, it looks kind of funny having a what looks like a red cover on a black cover. So what you can do for the cover is come down here, 
to choose colors. And the secondary color, I believe, is the background. And I'm going to try and change that to a red. Uh, maybe a redder red. No, actually, that matches really nicely, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. And, yeah, the white text works for me. Uh, this blends actually fairly nicely. And then what you do is you get, here's my description again. So let's go over to our, our description. Now, I don't want all of this. That would be a little too long. Mm, is filled with. Let's do this. I like the tagline. Let's grab all this stuff. Right click and say copy. And then come over to our book cover, our tab where we're writing, go to this and paste as plain text. There, you can see why I don't want it all because it gets really dinky. Now it's not using the lower right hand corner because what Amazon is gonna do is they're gonna put a barcode down there automatically. So if you, the other option is to upload an image and create an entire book cover. But what you've got to do is you've got to calculate the spine size based on the number of pages in your book and the thickness of the paper. And, oh, it's a nightmare. So what I like to do is do this. Use the cover creator to create the back cover. And then, okay, and here I would put the author description to create all the back cover and the spine and all that, and create your front cover the way that I'm doing. So let's just put Melanie Jackson, her name here as a placeholder. I would put a description and I'd cut it and paste it from Amazon. Then I go to the image. This is the author image, which I'm gonna get from my computer. I go to pictures and this is Melanie's stuff. And here's a nice picture of my wife. There we go. We have created the book cover. Now here, once again, I'd put the bio, which I would copy from Amazon in here. And then I say preview. Now it's gonna give me a preview. I don't know why I just saw what it's gonna look like, but it gives you a preview. There we go. Now I say save and submit. And that was the book cover. The manuscript is now uploaded. And let's see, it still says processing the file. Oh, it must be a really big file. Uh, AI generated? No, this is not AI generated. And then the final thing they do is you launch the previewer to preview your book. Now, this is going to happen every time you make modifications to the book. Of course, as I explained, you can't modify much on a paperback after you publish it because it has an ISBN, which kind of chisels it in granite. You'll have to republish again, but you can do so. You can modify a ebook. And when you do, you always want to have to preview every time you do it. So here it's checking for cover quality errors, and it's going to show you all of this stuff in the previewer. So it'll show you things that you need to change, things that go outside the margins. Now, once again, here you can see the red dashed lines. These are what you have to stay within. So this is what our cover is going to look like. And then you just page through. So here's more stuff. Now you can see what I did was I actually reformatted moving violation for a smaller page size. So you can see if the page size <laughs> of your, uh, if the page size of your manuscript doesn't match the page size you publish in, this is what you're gonna get, gigantic margins. So this is obviously in error. I would have to go format this manuscript for a larger page size, for six by nine, so it matches what I'm publishing. Now you can see it has running headers, as page numbers at the bottom, and everything looks good except for the size. I'm going to approve this even though I would exit the previewer and go modify my manuscript and upload it again, but we don't want to watch that. So I approve it, and it's giving me an estimated cost. I save and continue to make it to the last step, which is where we define our publishing rights and uh, set our price. 
Now, we have rights in all territories. You can do individual territories if you want. Usually, you have rights in all territories. The primary marketplace is already, yeah, that's already set for Amazon. And here's your price. Now, let's say we want, it says it has to be a minimum of $8.99 to cover our costs and less than $250. Okay, let's put something reasonable like $14. 99. Now, once you do that, what it does is it starts showing you what it's going to cost in all of these other countries. So it calculates the price in yen and so on. And then over here, it shows you how much you're going to make. Now, it's 60%, uh, which is the, your percentage after the costs and stuff like that. Uh, 60% is your cut of what's left over, which is only $3.60 per book. So you can see Print-on-demand books are pretty expensive, and you don't make a great deal of money on them. I actually make more money from Kindle book ebooks. Okay, here you say click expanded edition. What uh, distribution? What this will do is distribute to libraries and stuff like that. So you get you get forty percent or only six sixty cents on a fourteen ninety nine book with the distributed expanded distribution. But hey, it's more money. Go for it. Now, when you've finally done all this stuff, you can request a proof, and then you can publish your paperback. Now, when I click on publish a paperback, which I'm not going to do, you can also save as a draft. So if you want to come back and work on this later, save as a draft, and then you can go back to the bookshelf. Here we go. If I go to Bookshelf now. Remember, this is where we came in when we came to KDP. Here's our new book. It's ready to be published. I just need to continue setup and hit that publish button. Now, after you publish, Amazon's going to review the book and make sure that it's all okay and uh, adheres to their rules. And then they will approve it. It might take a couple of days for that occur to occur, but once they approve it, congratulations. You're a published paperback author.